Fellas, last time we were together with a pickup truck, we were making a TV show. Yeah, and he soaked me on his way home. You've cleaned up well. However, the one pickup truck we were missing was this, the Toyota Hilux. Yep. Did you know they've sold over 19 million of these worldwide since they were built? Not really. Got nice rims. Yeah. Towing there. capacity, three and a half tonnes. That's a big horse box. Grill's nice, isn't it? That's probably why they've sold more of these pickups in Europe. They're the most popular pickup truck in Europe. I quite like the colour. Yeah. Well, established in 1972 in Great Britain, where they've sold over 165,000 units. Really? Yeah. Styling is good, isn't it? I like the chrome mirrors. Well, this was the first model that could really take on the mighty Defender in Britain. And since then, they've been popping up on building sites across Britain ever since. Well, if you know so much about it, why don't you do the test drive, Ben? Just saying. Yeah, I'll take it out. A bit clever, isn't it? Clever clocks. No, no one likes to show off. Actually clever clogs Collins, the first generation was in 1968, though it took a few more years for it to come to the UK. Making this the eighth generation of Toyota Hilux. And did you know that when Toyota launched the Hilux in 1968, the name was a combination of high and luxury? But to be honest, the Hilux was only ever luxurious when compared to the other Toyota pickup at the time, which was the incredibly basic Toyota Stout. So don't say you never get taught any trivia on this channel. And talking of trivia, with its new 2.8 litre engine, this Hilux will get you to 62 miles an hour in 10.7 seconds and has a top speed of 109 miles an hour. It'll set you back just over 30k, another 583 quid if you want this rather nice nebula blue metallic paint. The Toyota Hilux is legendary around the world for its sort of go anywhere hard attitude the vehicle of choice if you're going to topple a regime you just put a few boys in the back with some rpgs on the flatbed and you're good to go so as an off-road monster or a building site workhorse it's got it licked but when it comes to refinement that's another story and actually along this road i can really feel it the suspension shimmying on, on bumps i'd never even noticed before so that will get quite wearing over a long distance but again it's not really what it's built for this is built as a workhorse Nevertheless, compared to its contemporaries, perhaps it's a little vague at the front end. Take it on a tarmac course and put it through a corner, it's a little bit light, a little bit uncertain perhaps. And that shake in the suspension, I definitely think could be improved. I mean, it's pretty basic in here. It's polyester and plastic everywhere. It is rugged, it's simple. I think that is the secret of success for Toyota. And it may not be the sexiest dashboard you're gonna see. I mean, this looks really old school, this sort of very original looking iPad screen, but it's very functional. Little things you notice like the heated seats, they don't come with three or four settings. They're either on or they're off. So it's not so much that this car has been over-engineered, it's that it's been made to work and work in a tough environment to do the simple things and do them well. But that primitive, feeling you get in this vehicle is it's what people go for you don't really care if you come off the building site scuff this polyester with your boots and throw your tools in the back it's not going to leave a dent and if it did so what you know it's built not to break not because it's been over engineered it's just because they've focused on the core things the simplicity of what this vehicle needs to do and I do like the fact that you can scroll through different drivetrain options so you can have two-wheel drive when you're going high speed, long distance on the road, down into four wheel drive with differential lock for those gnarly moments when you get into the mud, which is really where this one wants to be. This to me feels like a thoroughbred for the off-road environment. get used to that I think of course that shaking probably might be reduced with a big load in the back I would imagine it's pretty rare that a Hilux doesn't have a full load of building equipment and supplies and pallets of cement and you know whatever else could be piling up in the back of this thing perhaps just to squash the suspension down and, and uh, dampen this shimmy feeling 
other than that, everything's dead easy. Old school gear stick here, automatic, slam it down into D, but you have got the option to go manual if you want to. A little bit of sequential action down there, no paddles to get in the way of the work wheel. Being Toyota, you know that the power plant on this thing is that sort of never die workhorse. I mean, you can just wail on this thing and it will just keep pumping out the power. It's got that nice throaty boom coming out of the exhaust. Very reassuring, plenty of torque, lots of pulling power, exactly what it was built for. So it's a tick in the box for our favorite ever stick. Cheers, Ben.